Hello traders and welcome to a new strategy video of mine on risk management. The uh, reason I'm doing this video today, it was the most requested video that I had on my Patreon, so I thought that I would be uh, talking about this today. Okay, so let's get into it. So to start off with the importance of risk, risk management, um, with choosing the amount of capital that you would like to trade with from your bank account, I would recommend that you never trade with more money than you are willing to lose. So whenever you put money on exchange, uh, just have in the back of the mind, back of your mind that it is possible that you could lose all that money, uh, and that that could, um, and if that does happen, that you would be okay. So, for example, you don't want to be trading with your entire bank account, even if you're a professional trader, because if you do do that um, and you're not willing to lose all that money, then problems can occur when you are trading. Okay, let's get into the two types of traders. So we have two types of traders. We have our retail traders, which is the majority of the trading crowd. And then we have our professional traders who typically have a lot more capital and more knowledge in the market. So how most retail traders trade is with their full capital. So they're gonna be risking everything that they have, um, that they put on exchange. And they also don't like to use stop losses. Uh, so what this strategy gives you if you do trade like this, is it gives you many small uh, many small gains at the cost of major losses or a major loss that can uh, bankrupt your account. And the psychology behind why this happens is that traders don't like to take losses. It hurts a lot to take a loss and to say that you're incorrect in, in how you read the market. And because of that, traders like to uh, not sell even when they really should be selling. Uh, and this would also be known as runaway trades. So a runaway trade occurs when a trader buys and then the trade quickly goes against him or her and they get to a point where they don't want to sell because it's the point of no return. It's the point where if they do sell, they'd be selling at such, such a large loss that they can't psychologically handle that loss. Um, and that's really not the mindset that a trader should be having. A trader should not be looking at um, every trade is just uh, like a gain or loss. They should be looking at it from a market perspective of instead of am I going to make or lose money in this market, is there a high probability chance that the market will go up? And if there is, I'll put a proper stop loss in, uh, in effect. But uh, regardless, this is how most traders trade. I've attached just a quick little example here on Bitcoin when it was a lot cheaper of around 1K. Uh, just some examples. So most traders would have bought, as you can see volume-wise, would have bought around this market top. And if they had bought there, they would have had to suffer this entire loss. But if they were trading with a portion of their capital and they did use stop losses, what would have happened would have been if they had bought here incorrectly, then put a stop loss right below their, their buying point, then they would have suffered a tiny loss, really. Um, only a few percent from what this looks like, not that bad. But if they had bought here and then not put a stop loss in place and the market quickly moves against them, this looks to be, from my point of view, from about a 20 to 25 percent loss. So about, you know, 10 to 12 times bigger than if they had used a stop loss and used proper risk management. And the added benefit of trading this way with stop losses is they would have been out of this trade here and they could have even reevaluated re here. The market went up after this and uh, potentially bought on these volume spikes here and then actually made more money even with the market going way down like that. So then there's the other type of trader um, that I've kind of alluded to, which is the professional trader. Uh, and these kinds of guys or girls trade with a fraction of their capital and they almost always will use a stop loss. So what this strategy gives is many smaller gains, but also many smaller losses as well. Smaller losses because A, they're trading with only a fraction of their capital, and B, they're gonna be using stop losses. So what this also allows traders to have is it allows them to learn from their previous trades and look at you know a string of losses and see what's going on. If it's just uh, the market or maybe there's a flaw in their strategy, they can go from there. But um, traders who use this type of trading can't really do that as easily. So that's why um, I'm not recommending any trading style here, but I'm just saying that the two types of risk management between a retail trader and a professional, typically the professional is gonna be making more money in the long run. 
Okay, so now let's get into the fun part, which is talking about how you can trade like a professional if uh, you want to be at that level. So what I pulled up here is something called the Kelly Criterion. You can look that up if you want. Uh, in a basic sense, the Kelly Criterion looks at your win rate and looks at your risk reward and gives you a percent uh, amount of capital that you should be risking. So what I attached here is from Wikipedia. Uh, and this is really interesting. Uh, and if you read this, you can see some really interesting stuff that also applies to trading and psychology. So here you can see that there was a study where each participant was given 25 bucks, but they were told to um, bet on a coin that was going to be landing heads 60% of the time, as you can see, and they could place 300 bets. So the behavior, as you can probably expect, was not optimal in, in any sense. 28% of the participants even went bust, even though they had a 60% um, edge or a 10% edge over um, neutral, which is incredibly high. Uh, for a uh, for a trade like this, for a um, odds like that, and the average payout was just 91 uh, from 25. So that's actually really not a lot when you really look at how many trades that they could have, how many bets they could have taken, and their edge. And you can also see that only one in five of the participants reached 250, and that 18 of the 61 bet everything on one toss while two-thirds even tried to gamble on tails at some stage in the experiment, even though that would have a 40% edge. So th this is all just normal, irrational human behavior uh, that, I, that I'm showing right here. Um, but the point of this is to show you that if they had used the Kelly criterion, which I'm about to show you how to uh, use and calculate, then the right approach would actually just to bet 20% of their initial capital. So that would be five bucks on the first trade on the first uh, bet, and if they if they lost, then the next size would be a little bit smaller. So if they lost the five bucks, you would do 20% of 20 instead of 20% of 25, and then you'd be, be betting four. Uh, and then if winning, you know you would increase that 20% um, bet. So that's the correct way of how to do this. But as you can see, just like in these um, simulated lab experiments, just like with trading, you can see that a lot of people like to just use all of their capital um, all at once, which typically isn't really the way you want to go. So this probably doesn't make too much sense right now, but I'm going to show you guys a calculator and uh, then this will probably make a lot more sense. But all that this really is showing is um, how conservative or aggressive you'd like to be with your sizing. And if you want to be very conservative, you can use, you know, like a quarter Kelly to a half Kelly. And then if you want to be a little bit more normal, you'd be using probably a half Kelly to a full Kelly. So that probably makes no sense right now. So let me just show you what I'm talking about um, from FX Helpline. So what we have here is you have your win rate and you put in your reward per dollar and you can also put in your Kelly fraction. So remember this guy just comes from this, how aggressive you want to be. So a half Kelly is right in between conservative and aggressive. So pretty normal to have a half Kelly. Um, so like, let's say that you have your stop loss and your take profit and you find that your risk reward is, let's say three. So you're, you are going to be, um, winning three or losing one for ratio. And let's say your win rate for this is just 50. You can keep your win rate at 50 at the beginning, and then you can change this a bit later, um, over dozens of trades where you can start to find what your win rate is for certain risk rewards. All right. So let's calculate this with a half Kelly. So the Kelly Criterion is telling you right now to just risk 16.67% of your capital on this trade. And that would be the uh, right in between conservative and, and aggressive type of way to take the trade. If you want to be aggressive in your trade, which is fine, you could use a full Kelly. And let's see how the calculation changes with that three to one trade. You'd be risking a third of your um, capital on that trade. And if you were using a quarter Kelly, you would just be risking about 8%. So, you know, you can play around with these numbers and see what works best for you. But the bottom line is that um, regardless of how conservative or aggressive you want to be using, you want to be using some kind of um, criterion or some kind of stopper that prevents you from risking all of your capital. 
Uh, and this is more, th this video is more towards professional traders or traders who would like to take it to the next level. You know, I will say, if you're trading with a very small amount of money uh, and you're willing to lose that amount of money and you're just beginning, you could potentially trade it with your full capital, but just realize that your gains and losses are going to be a lot bigger. But when you start to be trading, when you start to trade with a lot more capital and it, and it becomes uh, something that you do for a living, that's when you should really not be trading with your full capital. So I know it might sound kind of strange that with my uh, current live stream challenge that I'm trading with my full capital on every trade, but the reason I'm doing that is because um, I'm willing to lose that and I'm also just doing it for a challenge. So I'm not really uh, trading that live stream as I would my normal trades, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's gonna be it for this risk management video. We have gone over um, the two types of traders. We've gone over importance of risk and how much you should risk from your bank account and also how much you, you should risk from your exchange. And then finally, we talked about the Kelly criterion and what that means for your uh, trading. And I will be posting a link to fxhelpline.com uh, slash the Forex Kelly calculator so that you can use this in your future trades. If you have any questions, concerns, or any comments, feel free to leave them below. Have a nice day.